Ron Mallory's emulsion and coating process involves assembling the chemicals. These include gelatin, silver nitrate, sodium chloride or bromide, and distilled water along with weighing cups. The chemicals have to be weighed, and in this case the gelatin is seen in the cup on the scale. Making the emulsion involves using a syringe to inject the silver nitrate into the halite gelatin mixture. Other things seen in the photograph here are our Gray Lab timer and a pH meter, along with the filters and stainless steel beakers for storage. A very precise temperature probe can be seen in the solution along with a magnetic stirrer. The emulsion, surfactant, hardener, and other components are being tempered at 100 degrees Fahrenheit along with the coating blade which is being brought to the same temperature. In the background is the aluminum foil catch trough for excess emulsion that might spill from having too much emulsion in the blade. An 11 by 14 inch piece of paper is taped down to a perfectly level sheet of glass. The paper is marked with the inner limits of the blade so that the coated area will be known because after dry down the coated area is very hard to see under the safe light. With Ron's personally designed coating blade in place and the paper marked with permanent marker, the coating is giving a coating number which includes the date and numerical sequence for that coating session. For an 8 by 10 inch sheet with a 5,000th undercut on the blade, about 12 milliliters of emulsion is injected into the well of the tempered coating blade. Then the blade is drawn across the surface of the sheet in a slow, even motion. The finished sheet is examined for uniformity. The color of this sheet approximates that of a silver bromo-iodide emulsion with an orthochromatic sensitizing dye. But in this example, Ron used plain food coloring to demonstrate and to test blades for uniformity. The bottom edge of the coated sheet shows a ridge of emulsion which is unusable. The top and bottom of the coated area is unusable. And the edges also show a ridge of unusable coating. This is why the coating blade is wider than the area to be coated. The coated sheet is compared to an 8 by 10 inch sheet of paper to ensure that the width and length of coated material is sufficient and free of defects. The 8 by 10 inch sheet is laid on the surface of a dried coating to ensure size. A 5 and a half inch wide sheet of Vestar plastic film can be coated with the same design blade by injecting a motion into a narrower coating blade. There are also film coating blades for this purpose. The finished sheet of film is examined for uniformity and defects. This plate is being prepared for coating with a 4 inch experimental plate coating blade. The plate is taped to the glass and the blade is positioned at the upper edge. The emulsion is then deposited at the edge of the plate under the blade and it is drawn down over the plate. Finished test plates are examined for quality. A finished plate coated with emulsion is examined here for quality. This is a reject. Note the defects at the edges and the center.